All right, 3.2, which is section 5.3 of our textbook, graphing quadratics in vertex form. And there's a little recall here. That quadratics are formed from y equals x squared. We haven't really done any graphing of quadratics, so let's take a look at our first graph of the quadratic y equals x squared. And it's very easy to do. We'll just get a table of values going here. So we've got our x values of the table of values and if you forget how to graph using a table of values you get to select whatever you're putting in for the x values so I'm going to start very simply at negative 3 climbing up by 1 0 1 2 we're going to fill in what the y values are based on those x values so you get to choose x got to figure out y negative 3 squared is positive 9 if you forget y negative 3 squared is very different from negative 3 with the squared on the entire thing. Negative 3 squared, the squared only affects the 3. It's not touching the negative, so that's negative 9. But negative 3 squared is positive 9 because a negative times a negative is a positive. And because the x value is what's being squared, we square the whole thing. We square all of it. Negative 2 squared is 4 negative 1 squared is 1, etc. So we have a spot at negative 3, 9. We have a spot at negative 2, 4. Negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. And we can then extrapolate and say, okay, well I see the pattern, and if I were to put a 3 here, this would be 3 squared, which would also be 9. And we can see our first parabola ever our most basic of all parabolas. And we connect the dots not with straight lines, but with curved lines. And we'll curve it around here and just kind of connect the dots as best we can. Don't forget arrows. And this is y equals x squared. So quadratic relations can be seen in three different ways when we write them using math. So we have three different forms here, standard form, which we'll be dealing with a lot later on. This is a trinomial we see here, and A, B, and C would all be numbers. We have factored form. Uh, we see a repetition here with A. You're going to see that in all three forms. We have X minus S times X minus T. We'll be dealing with this one before we get to standard form. We're actually going to work backwards. S and T would be numbers. And it's called factored form because these are three different factors, A, this bracket here, and this bracket here. And then we have vertex form. And you're going to need to memorize these forms. So today, I want you to memorize this particular form here. A, x minus h squared plus k. Keep in mind, this is x minus h. That's very important. So today's lesson focus focuses specifically on vertex form. So what we're going to start with is the A value. Now I like to think that the A stands for amplitude, just like an amplifier for music will make the music louder or softer. The A value for our parabola is going to do something very similar. Before we get to any sort of graphing of it, I want us to remember that the Y value in an equation like this is the height of the dot. So when we're dealing with Y equals MX plus B, y was the height, the up and down. And if I just go back a second here to our original graph, when we created the y values in our table of values, the y values were the height of the dots. So similarly, the y value is the height of the parabola. I'm going to use a different program here for graphing. And we're going to see here, I've got, I've got seven different graphs. This is actually all vertex form, but h and k are 0. So if I was to take this first graph and just kind of transform it into vertex form for you, it would be something like, something like this, where we have h is 0, k is 0, but my a value is a 1. I can actually type that in. So this is our first parabola. This is the same first parabola I just graphed at the first slide. And so when a is 1, nothing really special has happened to it. 
So let's take a look here. Let's see what happens when a is negative one. So instead of positive one, it's negative one. It went upside down. And I, you're gonna have to memorize that. So negative one is called a reflection. It reflects over the x-axis. This line right here being the x-axis. And we see a reflection, like a reflection of water. You could use words like it's flipped upside down or any sort of t terminology like that. So negative numbers make it flip upside down. Let's take a look when a is two. And before we even do that, maybe you should ask yourself, what, what do I think would happen if the a value is two? And Mr. Brash told me that that's the amplitude, like an amplifier. So if we make a two, oh, look at that. It got skinnier. Well, in reality, it didn't get skinnier. What's actually happening here is it's getting taller. And just like a rubber band, when you pull a rubber band tall, it gets thinner. So if I have a two, if I have a seven, look at that. So if my A was seven, it gets even taller or even thinner. Now let's try negative seven. What do you think is gonna happen when I put negative seven in? It's going to reflect because of the negative and it's going to be thin or taller because of the seven. Now what do we think is gonna happen if A was 0 0.5 or a decimal value? Well, let's see here. If it was seven or a big value, it got taller well, now it's gonna be a small value, or 0 0.5, don't forget, stands for half. So, here's my original graph, the red or the orange, or whatever color that is. Here's the new one, the green. So it got fatter or wider. Actually, it got shorter. Let's try 0 0.025, so quite a bit smaller. Well, look at that. That really got squished down. So basically what you're saying is, I want you to be 0 0.025 times your original height. That is essentially what that's saying. So let's go back to our slides. And we now know that when a is greater than one, so when a was a positive value greater than one, the parabola got taller. When a was a fraction or a decimal value smaller than one, like 0 0.5, the parabola gets shorter. And the byproduct of those two is that it got you know thinner and, and then wider. And we also saw that when a is negative, or a is less than zero, the parabola reflects over the x-axis. It flips around. So let's see a sample of that. They want us to quickly sketch y equals negative 2x squared. Now whenever you're sketching, you really should put the original parabola for yourself. It's really going to help yourself out. You need to memorize these values, folks. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. And parabolas are reflective, so you're just going to draw the exact same thing on the other side. And you're going to get really good at sketching these and connecting the dots. And as always, my hands are all shaky, so it's a horrible line, but you get the point. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take every single one of these points and you're going to multiply its height by the amplitude. Or the A, whoa, look at that A compared to the M. We're gonna compare its amplitude for the new graph. So let's do the new graph in purpley red here. So when X was zero, when X was zero, my height was zero. Okay, so let's take zero and multiply that by negative two. Well, zero times negative two is still zero. Anything in the world is times zero is zero. When X was one, I got a height of one because one squared is one. Well, one, a y value of one times negative two means negative two. Now when x was two, I got a y of four. Two squared is four times negative two is negative eight. Let's go over that one last time. A y value of four, its height was four, but now I need to multiply that by negative two. And negative two times four is negative eight, all the way down here. And if we were to do the three, three times three is nine, three squared is nine, nine times negative two is negative 18, it's off the screen. Okay, so let's take a look at the other side of the problem now. Negative one had a height of one, one times negative two is negative two. Okay, so there's, I can see the reflection, which means I'm also gonna have another dot here. So my new parabola, which we'll just connect the dots here, 
is going to look something like this. And so this is y equals negative 2 x squared. And this one up here was y equals just your normal x squared. And so we can see it flipped upside down. It's a little bit hard to see on this graph that it actually got twice as tall, but it did, and therefore got thinner. The next letter in y equals ax minus h plus k, or a vertex form, is the h value. We're going to go back to the graphing program here. So this is my y equals x squared parabola. Let's take a look when h is 1. And we really have to be careful here. It says the equation is x minus h squared. So if h is a positive 1, it'll say x minus h, or x minus 1. Huh. What happened to these two parabolas? What do I see here? Well, the, the vertex in my original parabola was 0, 0. The vertex in my new parabola is 1, 0. So it, it moved it to the right. It moved it to the right by 1, which is confusing because it says x minus 1. It went to the right. We're so used to subtractions going to the left. So we're going to have to keep that in mind. Let's try this x minus 5. What do we think is going to happen if I show you the x minus 5 graph? Well, your brain says, if I went x minus 1, that went 1 to the right. If I do x minus 5, that should go 5 to the right. And it did. OK. So we take a look at this parabola. Our vertex is 5, 0. Move to the right, 5. So let's see what happens when I do x plus 1. And you really have to keep in mind here that it's only a plus because it was x minus h. And if, if h is a negative 1, we know that negatives and negatives make positives. So let's graph this. Oh, it went to the left. Good. So what we saw when x, sorry, when h was positive 1, x minus 1, it moved to the right. With x plus 1, because what we're really seeing here is x plus 1, it moved to the left. So what do we think is going to happen with x plus 7? You got to think about this for a second here. It's supposed to be x minus h, which moves to the right. And so this says x minus a minus 7, because minus a minus makes plus. So x plus 7. So that's going to move it to the left. And there it is, all the way over on the left at negative 7, 1. So we go back to our slides here, and we say to ourselves, I know now that when h is greater than 0, or h is a positive value, the parabola translates, which is just the word shifts or moves, to the right. And it's going to look like this. It's going to look like x minus a number squared. When h is negative, or h is less than 0, the parabola translates, or shifts, left. And it will look like x plus a number squared, because two negatives create a positive. And just a quick example here. If it was an h of negative 3, x minus a minus means x plus. So a horizontal shift left by 3 in this particular example. Let's do our own example. Sketch y equals x plus 5 squared. So I know my original parabola has these values. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. Nothing new here. It's the original parabola I'm drawing. You should be doing this too. And so this is y equals x squared. Now let's graph this guy here. Well, what's happening here? So what is h? h must be, because it's supposed to be x minus h squared. So that means that it has to be a negative 5. That's the only way that I can have it be plus here. So this must say x minus negative 5 in order to get that to say plus 5 in the brackets. So that means that that tells me that in this particular example, h is negative 5. And I know a few things about that. Most of all, I know that when I graph this, that means because this is x plus 5, I'm going to the left. And I can verify that because h is negative 5, or shift horizontally by subtracting 5. So whatever my points were at, I'm going to go left 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
one, two, three, four, five, etc., etc. And I can connect the dots for my new parabola. A little bit thick. And so this parabola here is y equals x plus 5 squared. And so it moved left. It moved left 5. All right, the last letter is the k value. Well, let's think about this logically. If a made it flip upside down, taller or shorter, and h made it move left or right, what do you think the k is going to do? And we can remind ourselves again that the y value stands for the height of the parabola. So we're going to have some value pop out of this. And then the last thing we're going to do is add or subtract a k value. So that tells me, logically speaking, that my y value is going to either increase or decrease. And the y value is the height. So the k value is going to adjust my height. So let's just verify that that's true. So here's my y equals x squared parabola. Now let's do y equals x squared plus 1 with a k value of plus 1 on the end. Yep, it moved up 1. Nothing fancy. Let's do plus 4 all the way up at 4. Minus 2 all the way down. It moved down to minus 2. And let's do minus 3. And you know what? Let's have a little fun. Let's combine them. So I'm going to say y equals negative 0.03 x plus 4 squared plus 6. And you know what? I'm going to change that a value from 0 0.03 to 0 0.3. And let's see what's going on with this dark blue parabola. We've been told to flip upside down. That's the negative on the a value. Modify our height or amplitude or amplifier by 0 0.3, which is a small number, it's like one third your original height. H has to be negative in order for this to be x plus four. So it's moved left four and move up six. And that's exactly what's happened. So it got fatter or shorter, upside down, left and up. And so all of these combine to be able to tell us where to draw the parabola. Now, why would we have this? Why, you know, when would you ever need to do this? Well, what if you were building a bridge and you knew where your bridge was gonna go and you knew the height of your bridge and all of these things, it's to help us graph these sorts of things. You know, you think of well, any video games you've ever played where you're throwing a rock or a character has to jump. This is the path that it's going to follow. If you can visualize Super Mario jumping from this platform to some platform over here. That's the math being done to make make that character move. And so what we have is the k value greater than zero. Whenever k is positive, the parabola translates or shifts upward. It moves up. And when the k value is negative, the parabola shifts downward. Very, 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 very quickly, we're going to do an example. And this time, I'm not even going to draw the original parabola. So I'm going to go down 3. So my original parabola has a vertex here, so I'm going to go down 3. Normally, when I went over 1, I'd go up 1. Well, now I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, down 3. And it's reflective, so negative 1, 1, well, I'm going to go down 3 from there. At 2, I would have been at 4, 1, 2, 3. At 3, I would have been at 9, 1, 2, 3. And that's reflective as well. At negative 2, I would have been at 4, 1, 2, 3, and here as well. And that creates our, oops. That creates our new parabola. I don't even have to draw the old one because I'm getting so good at it. And so are you. Et voila. Our nice hot pink parabola. All right, so why is it called vertex form? You may have picked up on it by now. <clears throat> Just a reminder that A is the amplitude. So it's not the a value. The a value is not telling us where our vertex went. But if we take a look at some of our graphs, let me kind of open, or I'll go back to, let's see here, this one right here. I'm going to get rid of the a value on that one. So 
let's just take a peek here. Our original graph has a y equals x squared with vertex at 0, 0. When we move this parabola right 4 and up 6, right 4, up 6, look where our parabola is. It's at 4, 6. So you guessed it. The h value and the k value create our vertex. And that's why it's called vertex form. Okay, so we're going to do one last example. Describe the transformations being applied. So when we see the word describe, that means write in English. The transformations being applied to y equals x squared, that's our very basic parabola, in order to have the relation blah. So you know what, I'm not even going to read the rest of the question until I'm done that part. Describe the transformations being applied. So what's happening to our parabola here? Well, we can see that it's got a negative 3. So I'm going to say it's going to reflect over the x-axis. And I've also gotten taller. So it's going to stretch vertically by 3. It is a vertical stretch, or it got taller by 3. We can also see, because of the plus 2 inside the brackets here, that this has to translate two units. Now, is it going left or right? Two to the left, because h must be negative 2 in that case. And I can also see that it is going to translate 10 units down. And as long as you're able to tell me that it is moving you know, down 10, left 2, got taller by a factor of 3, I should probably fix the English on that one, and reflect it over the x-axis. There, you've, you're done. You've described the transformations being applied to y equals x squared in order to get that guy. So now they want us to sketch a graph of the new relation. All right, so it's kind of nice when they say sketch because sketch means you don't really have to do a full out graph. Well, let's sketch the original graph. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, and it's reflective on the other side. And what we're going to do, I'm not even going to connect those dots. I'm just going to apply transformations to those dots. So our new graph, let's make it a nice bright red, is supposed to reflect over the x-axis. So, you know, get upside down. And it's supposed to stretch vertically by a factor of 3. So if I, if I start at the origin, flip upside down. Okay, well, I did that. That's easy. Now, stretch vertically by a factor of 3. Your height is currently 0. Multiply by 3. It, 0. Go oh, 2 units left. 1, 2. And 10 units down. I think that's 10 there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 down here. So right about there. And now let's take a look at, you know, if I go one dot to the right. So let's focus on this dot right here. It's being told, flip upside down. Okay, so negative 1. Now make your height 3 times taller. Well, negative 1 times 3 is 3. So 1, 2, and 3. So now my height is at negative 3. Go 2 units left. 1, 2, and 10 units down. Way down here. Boop. Let's take a look at the negative 1 value. Flip upside down, or reflect over the x-axis. Okay. Stretch vertically by 3. So when your height used to be negative 1, now make it negative 3. Okay. Move 2 units left and 10 units down. Again at 2, 4. Your height used to be 4. Reflect over the x-axis. So be, oops. So come down to negative 4. And now stretch by 3, a factor of 3. So 4 times 3 is 12. So it's already down here. And then go 10 units down and 2 units to the left. So 2 units to the left and 10 units down, way down here. And that's reflective. And so I've got enough information now to draw my new parabola with a checkered line, apparently. And it's just a sketch. So if it's not perfect, that's OK. All right, so we got to see if this makes any sense. Negative, yep. Three times taller. Well, it certainly looks thinner. Two units left, uh huh. And 10 units down. Yep, that's definitely 10 units down. So it looks good to me. And so we will label it y equals negative 3 x plus 2 squared plus 10. Don't forget to label your graphs. 
All right, so let's talk about some of the important properties of this parabola. Where's the new vertex? You know what? I'm not even going to bother looking at my sketch because it's going to be hard to tell exactly where my new vertex is on the sketch. I can get the vertex from the equation. That's why it's called vertex form. So where is the vertex of this new parabola? Well, the vertex is at h k. And I've already discussed the fact that h has to be negative 2 in this case. So the vertex is negative 2 and negative 10. Awesome. What's the axis of symmetry? Don't forget that that's x equals, and then the x value of your vertex, so negative 2. We can verify that that's the case. It's reflective over this imaginary line, x equals negative 2. It opens downward. And what else do we know? We know that it has a maximum value at y equals negative 10. Sir, how'd you know it was in maximum value? Because that's the highest this parabola will ever go. It can never get higher than that negative 10 value. So it's a maximum value. So we've got our list of practice questions here. I suggest you do questions 1 and 2 at home. And then we're going to do the rest in class together. So leave me any uh, comments you want to leave in the comments section of the YouTube video. Or you can email me directly, talk to me directly in class. I'm open to uh, suggestions to make these videos better, fix my pacing, maybe my handwriting. I'll see you in class.